Hey guys, it's Welcome Tested. And it's Norm from Tested. Norman Chan, Camera um, Roz. That's right. Uh, for the past couple weeks, uh, almost a month now, I've been testing uh, this new Canon camera. It came out late last year. It's mm -hmm. the PowerShot G7X. Now, it looks like a point and shoot, but it's actually uh, one of these new, I think there's a, a growing class of compact cameras, high-end compact cameras. Uh, which so it's a tweener, kind of between a mirrorless and a, and a point and shoot, yeah, right? Point, when you think of point and shoot, most people think of the, I mean, especially the PowerShot brand. Back in the old days, PowerShot S210, you know, a $200 camera, yeah. $300 camera. Uh, not great. These are basically, you know, smartphones have replaced those. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the middle to high range, you have on the high range DSLRs or even uh, mirrorless full frame cameras. And then you also have your NEX cameras, your um, your uh, Samsung uh, NX cameras, but those uh, HPSC. Micro four thirds and that sort of thing. Exactly. APS and so this is kind of one step behind that. They're compact cameras, so they look like your old point and shoot cameras. They have fixed lenses, but the sensors on here are bigger than what you would get in a smartphone, okay. which is substantially bigger. Um, they're still smaller than Micro Four Thirds. They're called one-inch type sensors, which does not mean they're one-inch diagonal. They're about almost 16 millimeters, 15.84 or something. Which is three quarters of an inch-ish? Yeah, I think the, the ratio is simply 1.5. So when you okay. think of, when you say 35 millimeter equivalent camera, it's mm -hmm. not exactly 35 millimeters either diagonals. It's like 24, I think of that, 24 times 1.5. The, the reason they call it a 35 millimeter equivalent it's, is you use a 35 millimeter lens and, and it was you, an you old, get the right framing. It was an old camera okay. format. It was an old old style describing the, the film. So this is equivalent to your Sony RX100 Mark III? It is a direct competitor to that, which oh. is why I think this is interesting. Head so, to head. Uh, uh, all last year, I was looking for a really good complementary camera to my DSLR. Something and that fits in a jacket pocket that you can carry yeah. with you more places than you maybe want to carry a DSLR. Absolutely. Okay. And I ended up with this guy, which is the Sony RX100 Mark III, um, which is actually a fairly expensive camera. It's $800. I think it launched at $850, mm -hmm. uh, which when you think of a, like a point and shoot, you would never spend $800. It is a lot of money for it is a, lot of, like a point yeah. and shoot to you me. Should, it's a serious camera that you're mm -hmm. spending. It's a lot of money. Um, and it's a very popular camera. Camera, this is actually what I think is the best camera to take to like a concert or for a camping trip or a hiking trip. Um, Some place that weight and size mm -hmm. are a factor. Now Panasonic also has a camera in this class and I'll be getting that in next month to test. Mm -hmm. But I was really interested in Canon's because from everything I've read, the Canon G7X has almost the exact same sensor as what's in the Sony. Both in terms of size, quality, and like... It might even be even the same manufacturer. Oh, interesting. Uh, but I'm not one... Uh, can't confirm that, but it, it is the same size and in my tests, almost exact same quality. Okay. So the differences then come to the lenses well, and also and ergonomics, the ergonomics like that, right? usability, software, and Canon, um, Kind of, I would say in the past couple of years, a little slow to jump on the market for innovation. Do you, do you think, I mean, they have a, where Sony didn't have a robust DSLR market, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they were definitely selling DSLRs, but it wasn't a primary focus, and they didn't have a substantial part of the DSLR market. Canon definitely yes. has a substantial part of the DSLR market. Do you think that disincentivizes them from, from producing quality cameras in this kind of lower end price range? It or? shouldn't. It should. I think Canon obviously invested in DSLR in lenses, their lens ecosystem, EF, EF, uh, E lenses, um, EFS lenses. But Sony, which had, uh, which wasn't actually a DSLR, they had the translucent mm -hmm. um, cameras. They have done so well in the past couple of years, not only kind of kickstarting this, um, the NEX, the mirrorless camera, uh, interchangeable lens cameras, but also innovative cameras like the RX series, like the A7s, like the full frame mm -hmm. mirrorless cameras. And they weren't the first ones to do either of those things. No. But I think that I think they've done they really did a well. much better job of it than some of the other companies. They've that were done in the same things space. like integrated Wi Fi really well, mm -hmm. app support really well, uh, the UI design really well. And that's not to say Canon hasn't done it really well, or this isn't a great camera. But let's run through. Uh, let's run through everything then. So, uh, like I mentioned, the sensor, the, kind of the most important thing when buying into mm -hmm. a new camera and camera uh, body. Um, this is a one-inch type sensor, 20 megapixels. Smaller than APS-C, bigger than a cell phone. Bigger than a cell phone, still smaller than Micro Four Thirds, okay. uh, bigger than you'd find in a GoPro, for example. Okay. Um, and bigger sensor, better low light quality. Um, you can shoot in JPEG or RAW. Uh, they, of course, put different processors because mm -hmm. the camera companies make their own processors. They process JPEGs differently. They process RAW images, if at all, uh, differently. Um, 
and uh, they both have, um, they're both the same, very similar size if we compare them. The side cannon looks side. a little bit taller, maybe a little bit fatter. The cannon definitely is a little bit taller and a little bit fatter. I don't know if it's a perfect it's, comparison right it's there. It's real close, though. Yeah, it's really close. I would call these both jacket pocketable, but not pants pocketable. Uh, cargo shorts, kind of pocketable if you want it, but it'll weigh, weigh it down. It's going to flap around and bounce against your yep. head. Um, and then the lens is where they really uh, are different. So uh, the Canon uses a Zeiss lens. It's uh, 24 millimeters equivalent. You mean the Sony? Uh, the Sony, I'm sorry. The Sony is 24 to 70 millimeter equivalent. Um, F 2.8, uh, or it's F actually... Is it constant F 2.8 or is no, it F 2.8 to F 5 something? It is actually F 1.8 to 2.8. So it okay. starts at that's widest. A that's a fast 1 lens, yeah. Relatively fast, and then it steps up. And if you look online, there are curves. Like one of the important things is when you look at a lens is how fast it stops down. Like if you zoom in a little bit, and then it drops down from 1.8 mm -hmm. to, you know, to 2.8 or 3.5 or whatever. Um, the Sony, uh, stays at 1.8 for a little bit, and then once you get past about the 50 millimeter range, uh, it is at 2.8. Okay. The Canon is actually a 24 millimeter to 100 millimeter. It equivalent. zooms in further. Still. Equivalent, yeah. Okay. So it zooms in further, um, and it is also, uh, I believe, 1.8 to 2.8. So it's wide, it's just as wide. Uh, it stays, actually stays wide a little bit longer, but it has a longer uh, focal distance. So it can actually, it's a better, it's a better optical zoom. Okay. And, and, and we'll show comparisons. Does that mean it pokes out a further, further yeah, distance? Or? Yeah, it doesn't poke out all that much further. And I can show, actually. Oh, there it goes. Nope. Uh, it pokes just, out a little further. Just a little further, but you're going to get, you're going to be able to zoom in just a little more. It's funny, the actual glass element on the front looks like it's a little bit smaller on the Canon than it is on the Sony. Um, not that that really means a whole lot anymore, I guess. No. Um, so 24 to, to 100, which good for them, uh, they made that. Um, another big difference, there is an EVF on the Sony. Um, this is one of the reasons it's such a premium camera. Electronic viewfinder. Electronic viewfinder, which uh, we talked about last year. It pops up and then you pop this out and then it turns off the screen in the back if you use when a proximity sensor. It, yeah. um, and then it's good for reviewing photos, looking at photos during the day when there's glare on the LCD. Um, it, well, because the Sony cameras, it, 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 if it's like my mirrorless, you can always over crank the, the LCD, but yeah. then you lose any kind of ability to tell if your colors are right, which, so having the EVF and right. then the little hood with that makes it nice. Right, um, so no EVF on this. I okay. think EVF isn't a feature that you absolutely need. A lot of people like shooting with EVF. It doesn't, it's still not you how, know, as good as an actual optical viewfinder. How often do you find yourself using the EVF with the Sony? I would say uh, when outdoors in a bright day, mm -hmm. all the time. Okay. Uh, but in normal, in, out of all my shots, I would say maybe one out of every 10. Okay. So not regularly. So not that frequently. It's yes. not, it is it clearly isn't a deal breaker. No. Uh, ergonomically wise, one of the advantages of having a combat camera is your ability to shoot it not pressed against your face. Yeah, lifting it over your head yeah. or uh, down from the waist or whatever. Yeah. So they both also have uh, built-in flashes. So I'm going to turn this camera on. On the Sony, the flash pops up like that. That looks like a thing that will break very quickly. Yeah. I, I mean, I actually don't use flash a lot. Okay. Uh, it is useful in very dark areas. Or as like if the, you're shooting people against the sun, sunset or something like that, you want to do a little mm -hmm. fill. Yep. You can um, uh, with the Sony one, you can actually bounce the flash, which is a recommended technique. Do you have to hold it? Yeah, you, you okay. hold it Use up. Use your finger. Okay. Yeah, it's not that difficult to do that. And then it bounces up, okay. flash, creates a more even flash. With the Canon, you actually can't. You would break that if you mm. tried to, gotcha. to bounce that up. Um, minor difference there. Um, and then they both have uh, articulating LCDs in the back. So uh, the LCD on the Sony, which is a system I really love, uh, flips up. You can do 180. That, that is unbelievably useful. Does it flip it when you? Yeah, it does. Yes. So it, it's flips the orientation it. stays right. Uh, and actually, also, I, I makes it a mirror. Mm -hmm. um, but also, the Sony uh, articulating arm comes out, which I like, because then you can actually lower it and also lets you aim down. Okay. As well. So you have, it looks like a f 100, 270 degrees of motion or something like that there, if you want to get 180 degrees of motion, I guess, plus the, the tilt. Mm -hmm. um, how does the Canon work? Canon actually only does that all the way up. Oh, it's, all the way, I mean, all the way, all up, way up is the up important is, yes. part, I that think. That is actually absolutely the important part, but it doesn't come out and you can't aim it down. Mm. And not being able to down is kind of a bummer because I do, you do find yourself lifting the camera up over your head and shooting there. Now the Canon, 
Also, in terms of usage, this screen is a touchscreen. Canon is a big fan of putting mm. touchscreens on the back of their cameras, and you can use it, for example, for focusing. Um, oh, so you can tap to focus? Tap to uh, put the focus point. So yeah. Sony used to do touchscreens on the NEX. My NEX has a touchscreen. I literally never use it. Um, because I, I like to use the physical controls. And then you can actually also, um, for example, use the touchscreen to zoom in uh, oh, to manipulate for useful. playback, which that's actually that is one using, of the, yeah. yes. Um, how's the resolution on the touchscreen? Is, is the color reproduction good? Is it a, color is it a reproduction's good? good. Um, they're like 720 by 480, um, one million dots. Um, so like eight pixels to one when you're yeah. viewing your full-size images, basically? Exactly. Okay. Um, I don't like. I don't prefer using touchscreen. I'm really used to you know DSLRs without touchscreens, so it's not a real perk for me. But the ability to pinch and zoom in a playback, I think, is something you, you take for granted on a smartphone, for example, which is a nice feature. Did they sacrifice here. physical controls to put the touchscreen in, or are the physical controls good as well? There are actually a lot of physical controls, more so on the Canon than on the Sony. But that doesn't like mean that. that it's actually better. Okay. And it's one of those things that when you look at a spec sheet, like you see a physical dial here, you see a physical dial there. You know, they list all the physical dials for these manual controls. In practice, uh, it is a matter of personal preference. So both of these have um, lens rings that you can turn. The Sony lens ring is a smooth lens ring. So you can see you're not hearing any clicking sound, and it goes all the way, to, all and the way that around. is for focus assist, or you can, can you set it to other stuff? Customize it to whatever you want. You can the in different shutter. modes. Exactly. Okay. Aperture shutter, uh, focus. I love using it for focus, um, and it's a smooth focus right there. The Canon, and actually, they're actually really proud of this. The Canon um, lens ring is a clicky lens ring. Hmm. Hear that. So that that you would in, that implies you would want to use it for shutter speed and aperture Absolutely. rather than for focus yes. assist. Even though you can customize this to you know ISO everything, um, but it has shutter, to be clicky, right? It has okay. to be clicky. And what I found though, because I instinctively want to use this for focus, mm -hmm. is that the focus adjustment on and I can show you here becomes really sl it's not nearly as good as a Sony. Um, I think they want you to use the touchscreen for focus and then use the ring for, for other things. So right? for example, I have right now, this wow. is zoom to infinity, which is back behind us. The focus to infinity. The focus to infinity. And then I get to you know, three meters, two meters. I want to get macro. Notice I'm turning a lot. Oh. So did it reset? Uh, yeah. See how much I'm turning? I don't think you should use that for focus, Norm. It's making me really antsy. Uh, no, almost. The almost. success kit is not feeling the success. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there okay. it goes. Um, okay, so, but but on the other hand, like one of my all-time favorite film cameras gave me a ring on the inside for shutter, mm -hmm. which was unusual at the time. So you could set your aperture to what you wanted for the for the depth of field that you wanted, yep. and then adjust the shutter to get the exposure that you needed, which, right. which is incredibly useful. And in that position, it lets you stabilize the lens and the whole camera. Um, did, but did you find yourself using that at all, or not? Yeah, really? absolutely. There's uh, you can there's controls inside here, so. Uh, there's like every Canon camera, there's a ring here, which is also a directional pad for mm -hmm. quick access to settings. You can access some settings on the touch screen. Um, the big manual setting that, uh, that differentiates uh, this camera and the Sony is there's also exposure compensation uh, beneath this dial. Oh, so there's an actual physical control for that. Yes, but to access it with your thumb, it ergonomically, it does not click that well. But that's the kind of thing you set for the day, in my experience, and then yeah, kind of I said it's alone, a negative right? one. Like, oh god, it's I am not the biggest fan of this dial. My my the thumb placement for this is very awkward. It seems like they sh it seems like if you're going to devote a whole control to that, might as well make it make it good. Yeah, I, it's more like a two finger control. But then the really nice thing about having um, this dedicated exposure compensation is I can shoot then in manual, and then I can actually change my aperture and so here that's aperture I can go open it up to 1.8 okay. and then I can set my shutter here let's say let's expose right now and you're rotating the ring on that now on the ring on the back now I can set it to like 1 200 but it will adjust then my iso uh, to to exposure down so if I don't need this bright I can actually set the exposure still to you know negative 1 and 1 third and if I can focus so what was your what was your experience um, with noise? I mean, I know on that on the on the Sony you can shoot up to sixteen hundred ISO. You said oh, twelve hundred. Yeah, you can shoot up to sixteen with 
and without a lot of compromises, mm -hmm. I think it's the exact same thing here. Okay. Um, once you get into 3200 ISO or 6400 ISO, not only is the noise um, really apparent, but there's also discoloration. So you're going to want to use a noise yeah. denoise de de tool if you should. Or level, you know, or, or use use a flash at that point. Okay. Um, some of the the shadowy areas, for example, uh, under the chin, if you're shooting in, in a lower light situation, mm -hmm. uh, the detail in shadows are not is not as clear as I'd like them to be. How does the autofocus work on this? Is it multi points? Is it like what what technology are they using for autofocus? Um, it is just on on sensor autofocus. Okay. Um, I believe they are uh, contrast tech autofocus points, um, but there's three autofocus, or two focus modes, which the camera doesn't have, and I'll show you here. Uh, you which actually, the Sony doesn't have, you mean? The Sony doesn't have, if I can get this. So you actually have macro, auto, and manual, uh, mm -hmm. manual focus. It doesn't have that DMF mode that the Sony has where you can autofocus and then, oh, and then do micro adjust. adjustments. Even like though there that. is, yeah, I love that, and there's, but there is peak, uh, peak focus. Okay, um, so, you, so it'll highlight the, the in-focus yes. areas with uh, some degree of error so that you can yeah. theoretically get the eyeball, eyeballs in focus yep. or whatever it is you're going for. Okay. Uh, they both have Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, the Canon's app is actually not the same app as you, you would use for the EOS cameras. Um, it's, I think, the, the like window camera, Canon uh, window preview, and I have my phone here um, to set it up. Um, you can transfer photos, you can remote shoot, uh, setting up with oh, a really? Wi-Fi. So you can set up a, on a tripod, get everybody yeah. in the, lined up, and you don't have to and do the can, thing where you hit 10 seconds and run like yes. hell to get back? Yeah, That's good. Camera window is the name of the app. Um, setting up is super easy. You can have it both of these, the camera and your phone, connect to a, a, a shared hotspot, mm -hmm. your local hotspot, or you can have the phone connect directly to the camera. Um, you can set a password. Does it have a big impact on battery life for the camera? Yes. So the battery life on this camera, not that great. Um, I got maybe 200, between 200 and 250 photos with a full battery mm -hmm. and transferring photos back and forth. Uh, what I do like, though, is when you transfer photos, you can transfer the full resolution of oh, JPEGs. So uh, but not raw, I no, assume. You can't shoot raw. Okay. Uh, there's actually no raw processor in this camera. So you can't shoot raw at all? You can shoot raw, oh, but no, okay. it, won't pr it won't develop the raw. You have okay. to import it and then use a program Lightroom like Lightroom or something. Or like or something. Okay. Um, no apps on the Canon. Uh, I really actually have come to like having some of the apps on the Sony, uh, although getting to the apps on the Sony is still clunky. You have to load the apps and then you're in a separate menu what, system. What do you use the apps for on the Sony? Time lapse okay. is the best thing uh, on the Sony. Automated, you can plug in uh, micro USB, mm -hmm. so power is sustained on here. You can set your interval and then you can you can actually have it set in your exposure change over time. Um, you won't have that on the Canon. Although there are, like every basic camera, your smart scene mode, so you can detect what type of scene you're shooting so faces I was, like. I was gonna say, with this kind of camera, unlike a DSLR or even a mirrorless, you know, there are times when you hand the camera to someone else and want them to take a picture of you. Mm -hmm. Can, is there a good mode for yep. that on this? Absolutely easy, good program and auto modes, mm -hmm. smart scene select modes, um, and the image quality out of those, totally good. Okay. Yeah, um, I was shooting auto ISO, you know, F2.8, I think it's the sharpest probably at F4 mm -hmm. um, from edge to edge. Um, and image quality is good, totally good. Uh, much better than you're going to get in a smartphone. Um, Something you can blow up to eight by ten. And, oh yeah, and absolutely. Or, yes. or higher even. Yes, yes. And being able to zoom, you know, to a hundred millimeter equivalent, um, you can actually, you know, the further you zoom in, the more enhanced you can get your bokeh and the blur in the background. Cool. But the advantage this camera really has over Sony is that it's. One, it's hundred dollars cheaper. It's seven hundred dollars okay. over eight, as opposed to eight hundred dollars, and that the lens goes to hundred millimeters as opposed to the seventy millimeters. Um, I still think the Sony usability-wise is better. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the image quality is slightly better on the JPEGs and the Sony. It seemed like you preferred this the smooth uh, focus ring. Definitely to the clicky, prefer clicky the smooth ring. ring. I prefer the apps. I find that actually useful. Okay. And while the EVF isn't essential to me shooting photos, it is a, a nice plus. Worth a hundred bucks. Yes, for me worth a hundred bucks, all those things combined. How's the battery life on the Sony compared to the Canon? Uh, better, it shoots about okay. 50 photos more okay. than the Canon. And, and that's with Wi-Fi on and all the with normal stuff yep, you would do? Yep, okay. exactly. Um, so I think it's a, it's a good attempt by Canon. Uh, I think people, you know, if you can make the most out of this camera, again, this is not a camera to buy someone who has only previously shot with a smartphone before. I wouldn't say this is the next step up. Where, um, where, where would you go with that? A mirror, uh, 
an uh, inexpensive Micro Four Thirds or, exactly. or mirrorless? Exactly. An inexpensive uh, Micro Four Thirds camera, um, uh, a good Lumix camera where you can learn different focal lengths, learn lenses, uh, learn manual shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, I think the mindset, it, the menus are still too clunky to get around uh, if you're just getting into manual shooting. Um, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of configurability. I mean, you talk about exposure comp, yep. ISO, aperture, shutter speed, white balance, white balance, all those yep. stuff. And that, ND yeah. filters in there. Uh, there's a lot you can do, but it, it's you have to get to it because it is you know there's it's it's a it's pushing all this small form factor. So last thing, um, you know, essentially at this point, all film all photo cameras are also video cameras. Yes. How, how's the video on this guy? Uh, video quality is okay. Not a lot of settings though. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, there are you can't shoot 24p. It does 1080, 30, 1080, 60. Okay. Dedicated video button for just automatic shooting video. Mm -hmm. 30 minute limits. Can you shoot stills while you're shooting video? You or can no? shoot still. There's a mode where you can shoot stills okay. while you shoot uh, shoot video. Um, but I would not buy this if you want to use this as a dedicated video camera. I would say another mirrorless camera. And much it's better SD that. cards. Uh, one S one SD card slot. How much do the batteries cost? Do you know? I don't know how much the batteries cost, but you can definitely buy replaceable okay. batteries. And it does come with a wall charger, so you don't have to plug it. Oh, into. that's that's nice. Yeah, you don't so have you to don't plug need it. need the camera to charge it. Yep. Um, so that's the Canon PowerShot G7X. It's still in the PowerShot line. Um, I still like the Sony RX100. Mark III. Full disclosure, that's one that you bought for yourself. That's so the one I bought for myself. There may be a cognitive bias here, but I yes. think I trust you at this point. Uh, but I'm uh, absolutely interested in this, you know, in, in this type of ca this category of the high-end compact cameras, and I will be looking at more of these but, in the coming months. As somebody who used to shoot SLRs before digital mm -hmm. and has has a mirrorless, like this is super compelling to me because the mirrorless is small, but it's still not as portable as this yeah. guy. And yeah. and seven hundred dollars, we're getting closer to where I'm willing to invest. Yeah, yeah. So. You buy a mirrorless camera now if you want uh, instead of an entry level DSLR, mm -hmm. and if you don't plan on buying really expensive lenses now that you're gonna just swap out bodies if, for. If, like if you want one or two lenses, maybe get a mirrorless. Otherwise, That's get this fantastic. guy. Fantastic. Um, and, or this uh, this type of camera makes a great second camera if you already are invested in a high-end mirrorless system or high-end uh, DSLR well, system. Either one. Okay. Yeah. Great. So uh, that's it. Uh, also, thank you to BNH for providing this camera test mm -hmm. to loan for a month to test. Um, and we'll have more stuff on tested in the coming weeks and months. See you guys soon. Bye.